Hi, I'm Max Walker-Williams and welcome to part two of the interview uh, with John Meyer. John's kindly agreed to let us come and have a look at his studio and I just felt that on the roof in Venice um, we were kind of cut short because there was a time constraint and John had work to do on the, on the roof and so for me anyway I think there was just a few questions that I wanted to ask that, that were really bugging me and I really want to get out of John because um, he is such a, a master uh, craftsman and, and, and artist and so I really uh, respect his opinion and I want to hear what he's got to say about some questions that I didn't get the opportunity to ask in Venice. So John, thank you so much for mm. inviting us uh, to your studio. Pleasure. Here in the English countryside, it's absolutely fantastic. And um, we were just talking about that table, it's just so so fantastic, isn't it? With the, I mean, how many years of paint is that on the table, do you know? <laughs> um, yeah, around about 15. Is it? Mm. Wow, because it's it is actually it's it's the kind of thing that you see in a Van Gogh museum or something, you know, as you walk around. And oh yeah, there's installations. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the kind of thing you see. So it's really really nice to see it live. You know, in years to come, I'm sure that'll be in a in a museum somewhere. So. Glyn was saying, you know, those paintings we did on that rooftop, he was yes. actually going to um, save the palettes. Right. Okay. Wow. You know, the yeah. Color palettes, and I'm still using those colors actually. Um, and whoever bought one of those paintings. Um, yes will get a kind of backup collection of the paints and the materials used during its wow. manufacture, creation. What a great idea, yeah, that you get some of the sort of behind the scenes and the material mm. that goes into creating. And the film as well, of course, so you can actually see your course. painting being created. Of course, so a film is being made about your incredible uh, life story. Can you talk about it? Are you okay to talk about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't know too much about it. I know that um, they're in Cannes, France, with it as we speak, and they've got a... Um, a very respectable outfit called Parkstone Pictures, who are um, responsible for the selling of it. But it has already sold, I think, in quite a few territories. Wow. Um, even before, you know, it's funny, you can, you, you can sell these things on the basis of who's in it. Uh, what it's about, presumably, What the story. it's about, yeah. and the, particularly about the script. Is it a locked script? What does that um, mean? Well, a script that is not locked can depend an awful lot on good luck and things working out that the actors busk it properly right. um, so that there's something there for the director to edit. If it, if it isn't locked, um, uh, what you need is somebody called a script doctor. Right. And we met two of those, um, Ian Lafrenet and Dick Clement, who were famous for porridge and all those I think they even did Hancock's half hour I can't remember but yeah. they're still active and they are two script doctors so they will they will go into a film which is kind of just not working yes and they'll go right if you do this 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 and this yes it'll work it'll flow and it'll and they write it'll the move script and, and say this is what we've got to change okay. and, and, and and when you when because the, obviously there aren't many people who uh, have had a life that that, that justifies uh, a movie and i, I guess the, the kind of oh, i think yours <laughs> well we'll see it's not it's not uh yeah i i, I don't I, I well thank you very few, much a few more years to go a few more years yeah, to go yeah. yeah exactly so um i have you seen catch me if you can you know about the forger and uh yes yeah abagnale jr so it's i kind of it's sort of Britain's answer to that, effectively, is in my mind anyway. What, what's what's involved uh, with with uh, somebody making a movie of your life? Do they do they come to you and say, "Give us the gist, and then we'll go away an artistic license," or do they say, "Or oh, is it as detailed as you know? What did you say to this person at this time?" Or you know, what did the arresting officer say as they slap the cuffs on? No, and, it's no. not a documentary. We, no, I, right. I've done God knows how many documentaries for you name them, CNN and yeah. whatever. Um, Many, many documentaries based on what really happened. Fact, yeah. And they yeah. interviewed the police, they interviewed me, and in one case they actually interviewed John Drew. Wow. Um, but I think I've probably done about 10 of those, um, usually for North America, but also here. Sky, and then I got a Sky TV series. But um, this is not a documentary. It is a drama loosely based on real events loosely based okay so there's all kind of changes to the personnel and this is first and foremost um something you'd want to go and watch in the cinema yes. which is a, a good 
entertainment. It's entertaining. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay. And, and that's, yeah. So kind of what was said at the time, uh, that specifics is kind of irrelevant because they'll just do what exactly. works. Exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the arrest, my arrest, yes. for instance, I mean, you can, how do you do that? Um, do, 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 how do you dramatize that? Well, I mean, filmmakers have got an idea about what an arrest looks like. Well, I'd ha probably have you jumping out of a window and then, yeah, you are, and so then into and a then getting boat. on my motorbike and speeding. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then onto a speedboat. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a helicopter may be involved. So all those kinds. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah, uh, okay. Whereas, uh, as quite often, real life's a little bit duller, isn't it? More pedestrian, yes. Yeah, more pedestrian. That's a good, good way of describing it. Um, so when we were in uh, Venice, we touched on very lightly, and I'd just like to go back to it, if I may, revisit because it really, really interests me in people's perceived value of things, and in this case, specifically art. And what I find very uh, interesting and entertaining, it makes me laugh actually, when I read some stories, when the forger's work becomes more valuable, financially anyway, in, in, in financial terms, more expensive than the thing that he was forging That's in the first place. That's happened to Van Meegeren, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So his stuff's you know, f far more now expensive than, than the stuff that he was forging. Mm. It, it, thing. So in your mind, where, when does the forger become the artist? And is there a difference between a forger and an artist? And is there a, is there a tipping point? So will you become more valuable than the, the people that You're you... You're asking the wrong person, really. I mean, these are, f these are I do not have a PhD in philosophy no, or fair. semantics and you know I yeah. uh, psychology. I'll do whatever, the best yeah. I can with yeah. this question. Yeah, what's your yeah yeah. But fair. I mean, my take on it really is that people resonate with a good forgery, a good fake. I don't do forgeries now. No. I do fakes. Yeah, a forgery has to be as convincing from the back as it does from the front. That's the first thing an expert would look at. He would turn the painting around and look for stickers and other telltale sounds, signs on the back of the painting. So it's the intention that's different, I guess. A fake doesn't do any of that. A fake just says, my paintings, say genuine fakes, just say, um, I look very much like a Monet, a Modigliani, a Cezanne, a Picasso, and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So you kind of know what you're buying. But you, to go back to your point, um, there is a transaction that you participate in knowingly when you go and look at a Van Gogh painting, an original Van Gogh. You go to the museum, you look at the Van Gogh, and along with that, you take all the baggage about the tortured life, the artist, the failure, the suicide, the neglect in his lifetime, the exhibition in 1906, I think. The and, pain. And, and, the, and, the, and then, of course, you bring in the money. And then the money... Uh, which has escalated to ridiculous levels now, hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah. When he couldn't give give a painting away, so it's you take all that baggage into it. Now, if and there are, I mean, there are many theories about fake Van Goghs, and we mentioned Modigliani, particularly Modigliani. Does that baggage uh, make the piece better, though? Of course. Right. Okay. It, of course, it is. I mean, believing is seeing. Yes. If you, I mean, you believe you're talking to me. Yes. The people who are watching this believe that you're you and I'm me. Yes. We don't necessarily have to be. Um, you know, I, I've just, I've just seen you creating the most remarkable um, computer kind of things. Yeah. You could probably, you know, get somebody. You could do this face. And yeah, I could stick this interview on. without you. Exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, it's it, yeah, it yeah, can yeah, be it's done. Fair, it's very fair. Yeah. Uh, and um, but it's the authenticity, the backstory, and everything that went into the original that makes it part of what it is. Is what you're in my case, yes, yes, yeah. I think so. Okay. I think what uh, what validates what I do is the fact that I went to prison, um, that I was picked up really by the cops and commissioned to paint by the police, and then Sotheby's, uh, you know, came on board and invited me to lecture to them, which I, I still do twice a year. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and you know, I, went, I did a, did shows with the head of arts and antiques in in Scotland Yard, and became friends with Charlie Hill, yes. who was somewhat, you know, Charlie Hill was the guy who recovered Edvard Munch's scream when yeah. it was nicked. Yeah. Legend died unfortunately, but um, I think all that kind of backstory, and also I don't I I, I don't think I, I ever had that kind of pride in what I'd done. So I was kind of thinking, oh, I showed you, you miserable butt.
did you yeah, know? But, yeah. Um, and so that kind of... Um, you weren't trying to fight the system? It, you, no. No. Well, well I was trying to feed my children. Yeah. That was as simple as that. Yes. If, if I couldn't get money coming into my house, yes. um, I would have lost... I would have lost my three-year-old daughter and my 18-month-old 18, 18 son. They would have taken them into care. Mm. So... Um, it was necessity. So yeah. it just had to be done. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was. Yes. And it, luckily, I mean, luckily, um, you know, for three or four years, it was absolutely wonderful. It meant I could stay at home. They were preschool and I could look after them. Yes. It afforded you a life that meant that you could be with your children, look after them, provide yes. for them, which yeah. is every parent's responsibility. And I guess this, you could argue that a person's responsibility is first their children and then society. Well, I do. So I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, yeah. that that, yes. that probably sounds, you know, but I do because it suits me to, to, to say that. I mean, although somebody else would say, well, fair enough. But what about all the people who got deceived by the crime? And, um, you know, I, well, I don't have an answer to that, really. Well I, well, I think I do, which is, well, if they if they paid a million pounds for a painting then they did so because either they b believe it's worth that money or because they believe that the greater fool theory that they will be able to sell it for more money in the future. Do you know the funniest thing about he, that was was yeah. John Drew had sold a Giacometti, a large Giacometti standing nude to an American gentleman who uh, in the end um, was recruited by Scotland Yard to actually unravel some of the case Right, and he actually had I think it was three original Giacometti's. And he said to one of the police who then came and told me that he thought my Giacometti was better than Giacometti's Giacometti's. Really? And he, yes. Oh, wow. And he actually hung it in pride of place and the two originals by like, every side. side of it. And I thought, gosh, that is so peculiar. I mean, that, yeah, that's uh, almost you know, these perverse, isn't it? It's, it's 12, 14, yeah. 13, 20, 30 million. <laughs> uh, they're, a, they're big money, Giacometti painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're beautiful too. Yeah. And... That that was just just turns the whole thing on its head. It just makes a mockery of the whole case. It does turn everything it, on its head. Yeah, it does. But for me, I mean, on a day to day basis, I don't go there because, no. you know, I think I mean, you, you what you're looking for is some kind of uh, logical, emotional, uh, p p particularly logical explanation of why people behave like that. Yes, um, and you know, what was going through his mind when he he said the fake is better than the original. I mean, how can you say that? Yeah. But 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 you know that 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 happens. Well, well I mean it's his right to say it's yeah, well, beauty it. in the eye of the beholder. He yeah. bought it. It's his to own and his to treat as he wishes, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And if he enjoys that one more than the other two, then who's to say that it's not better than the other other three. Of uh, other three. Who's to say that it's not better to mm. him at least? Mm. Um and, and that's, it's just, I love the fact that uh, there's no hard, it's not binary, there's no hard rules to it, which is so different to what I do generally day to day. Now then, if you look at someone like Vermeer, these numbers will be wrong, but if we sort of rewind back to around about 1890, there were something like 160, 170 authenticated Vermeers. Vermeer was just, nobody took much notice of him right. until, you know, the mid 19th century. Now, today, that 180, 190 originals is down to around about 65 to 70 because they've been disauthenticated. And does that mean that they're not real? Or yes. does it mean it, it just mean, means... It means that they're currently not real until yeah. someone else comes along and says, no, that one is not... Because Vermeer... It's interesting because there was no school of Vermeer. He didn't have pupils who came and right. painted the following or, or, or anything. But just Everybody around Delft kind of knew what he was up to. Yeah. And some people went... That's good. He was using a camera and projecting and um, very, right, okay. one of the very early kind of uses of that technique. Yes. Um, and you, need, you could only do that in a studio, really. Yes. Um, and, and so a lot of people have got paintings that, you know, it looks like a Vermeer. It says it's a Vermeer, but in fact, the current expertise on it is that it's not. And that's the, that's, the, that's the operative word though, isn't it? Current. Yes. So the minute somebody with, with a, a bigger name, more um, think better tech, better w whatever, more um, prestige says that it is real, all of a sudden it's real again. I've got the answer to this, mm. funnily enough. If you take a painting like this, yes. and in years to come, you actually scan it. I mean, it's not finished. But what you notice is that my thumbs are touching the painting all the way around. So I think what they should do 
is they should take all these paintings out of their frames yes. and scan them right. for scan them for um, thumbprints. And if they have the same thumbprint on a painting that's been disauthenticated, you can say it's almost certain that that is an original because guess what? It's got Johannes Vermeer's thumbs on the side of it. Yeah, of course. And I reckon that is somewhere, you, you know, where someone like you yes. could go big time. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you, you, would save, you would save them fortunes of money doing chemical analysis, looking yeah. for different kinds of cobalt of course, blue yeah. and all that Well, bullshit. insurance and all the other stuff yeah. as well. And uh, there'd be a lot of losers too. Current there would owners. be a few losers, but yeah, I mean, I can't yeah. see how you can pick up a painting really without, I mean, like I've just left my thumbprints on that. Yeah. I don't see how you can not do it. Yeah, Unless you yeah, wear yeah. gloves or something. Yeah, which yeah. Nobody yeah. does. Right. Yeah. Silly. Yeah. No, it's 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 interesting yeah. point. What I notice in the in the background here that you've got what appears to be uh, an original Banksy, um, but being where we are, I'm guessing I'm guessing it's not. So, w w what's your take on modern art, graffiti? You know, graffiti. You see something on a wall. Is that art? I love in your Banksy. Mind? Um, you do. I really think he's he's okay. just. You love his art, art, or you love what he stands for, both. or both? Yeah, both. Both. I mean, I, I don't, I don't do politics, but I know he's very much into the Palestinian oh, thing, very isn't much. He? He's got the hotel and the whole thing, yeah, yeah. all yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but leaving, uh, yes, I'm well, fair play to him. It's a free country, and or it used to be. Um, he, he just, he takes the piss, but he does it in a way which is not aggressive, like I showed you that painting where the man is actually telling you to fuck off. Yeah. That's just a little bit too strong yes. in some ways. I mean, you wouldn't want, you'd have to say, we don't want under 18, under 16 year olds looking at this. Yes. Um, the way he does things, every, and that image of the girl letting go the balloon. Mm. Um, I think he's got a, an, a he, he visualizes these images. He. He thinks of it, and then he cuts the st stencils to do them. It's 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 brilliant, is yes. what it is. Actually, I, I, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's I, I hadn't considered that. That it's very very controversial without being brutal or offensive. Quite. And, and I think f thinking about it, it must be that some of them are characters. So it's a it's an ape saying, "Laugh now, but one day we'll be in charge." Um, and and I, the, for me, that represents the masses and, and, and the poor and so on and so forth. But because it's an ape wearing the, 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 the board, or it's a rat, or, or whatever it may be, it's a bit like uh, it's you know South Park and those sort of things. They're less offensive because they're cartoons, but yes. the points they make are very political. Yes. So you, you so you, you, you would you ever buy a Banksy? Do you see? Do you agree? Yeah, there'd be with no the need for me to buy a Banksy. I'd make one of my own. If I really, <laughs> I mean, like that one yeah. is. Um, very I, point. I just, I was so impressed with that when I saw it and had gone for £7 million or something. Yeah. I thought, I've got to do that, but I'm going to make a few changes. And obviously I'll put um, after Banksy, John Myatt. I mean, you wouldn't say this is, you know, you have to. Yes. Um, but I'm going to have probably, I keep on changing my mind about this, but I'm going to have a, one of these paintings, probably that one, in the shopping trolley or floating on the surface. Yeah, um, of the of the lily pond, just kind of slowly degrading. Melting or away, I yeah. might have a, a diver with a helmet come up and he's actually holding it he's above holding his, it head. his head. Yeah. Going, Look what I found at the bottom of the lily patch. Yeah, you know, somebody's just chucked him yeah. away. I'm Fantastic. not sure, but that, there'll be something. Yeah. I might even have Monet standing on the bridge with his arms on top of the top rail looking down. But uh, no, I think that would spoil it. We just need something clever down yes. there. Um, and you know that, apart from anything else, I mean, think of the money banks he makes. I mean, that was seven million pounds. Well, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, they've just broken a record with uh, money actually in Venice, haven't they? I don't know. Did you see that? It's no. Sold, uh, it was just sold for. I think I'll have to double check the figures, and I'll put I'll put a link in the description below to this video with the sale. But it was forty six million. I think for one of the um, uh, uh, Sotheby sold at auction one of the. Uh, Monet's in Venice. Yeah, it's just sold broken, broken a new record for a Monet. So it's just, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? So, um, what is the matter with rich people? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you've got to ask yourself, haven't you? It, I mean, forty-six million pounds. Just think what you could do. I mean, you'd obviously probably keep three million, you know, and then that leaves you with forty-three million. You can go and do something really righteous and useful for humanity with, like. You know, not necessarily giving it to charities, but you can 
open a hospital ward or you could do something really really lovely well i think i think to be fair it's all relative isn't it because we don't know who bought it so how do you know they haven't done that as well i don't so it's all relative if you're worth a thousand million a billion and whether somebody should be worth that much is a completely different conversation but if i was worth a thousand million and i want to spend 300 million on a hospital for sick children and my reward for doing so and delivering that for all those children is buying this painting that i love very much and also believe will go up in value for 43 million who's to say i shouldn't or can't nobody's saying you shouldn't but the, the odds are that you the people who buy those paintings don't yeah that's fine you know, i mean i've come across it once or twice where someone's actually bought a money and it was a um, quite a famous celebrity uh, individual and he'd bought a money which was really I thought it was a fake uh, and he wanted an exact copy of it because he he had to keep the original um, in a bank vault in Switzerland yeah and, and yeah quite a bit of that I've done that several times for wealthy people who um, on one occasion I remember a lovely man came with a small Lowry and we, it, it was here. It was worth fortunes. It was worth more than this house. Yeah. And it was nerve wracking. But anyway, I had the original, so I created another version. And then he. Did you definitely give them back the original and the copy? I did. <laughs> and, and, and then he. Not two copies now. Took my original. Yeah. My original. Yes, back, your original. Put it in yes. the frame in his kitchen. Yes. So nobody knew he'd sold it. In the yes. meantime, he took it round to uh, Sotheby's and sold it for uh, 900,000. Wow. And so, you know, nobody knew. And he still got the benefit of the And I got two and so. sixpence for the whole job, you know. Two and sixpence for the whole job, yeah. Oh. Are you ever tempted to, to, to do anything naughty again? Or does that not even enter? Not necessarily. I, clearly, you know, you're, you do very well on your own right now. But, but is there anything that in you that... Not really. No. I mean, I do think about it and I think, you know... What if? I sometimes have these dreams. Mm. I had one last week when, um, when I'd done that. And... Um, you know, as per usual, so the the crime was unravelling, and it's one of those anxiety dreams oh God, when you go, yeah. "Oh, they're coming for me!" Yeah, oh, yeah, God. yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. Then you wake your up. Your subconscious is playing out things yes. you've been potentially thinking Don't about when you're painting. Do it. Don't is, do you know, it. I mean, there's no yeah. point of going through all that and just no. and doing it again. But I remember, I, 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 I would, um, yeah. I mean, I was, yeah. I mean. You have to find, Banksy would be a good example to, to, to fake. I mean, if you're going to do something from the 1960s, you've got to get the right canvas, the right yeah. paint. Yes. The right, the, you know, forgery is such a bull's ache, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas, you know, now I, I, I just don't have to worry about that. No, no, I understand. And I, and I, I didn't really necessarily meant for, for, for financial gain, just because just you can. I mean, you know, it would just be interesting, particularly with Banksy and things. Because we've, we've already done that. Years ago, we had... Um, we had French TV here, and while they waited, I, I did a, a Giacometti um, standing giant on a small man, or my Grand Arbre. It was actually a big tree right. and a small man, and they took it to, I think they might have taken it to Sotheby's, uh, and they authenticated it, and then they took it to Paris, and they authenticated it in Paris. Wow. And then they destroyed it. Wow. Because I was just about to say, what, what, a, what a fantastic social experiment for, for, to see if we, you know, if you couldn't. But it's been done and they did and then they destroyed it. Mm. Wow. It just goes to show. Well, that's that what you, they said. You're still, so, you know. Well, presumably they documented it. So but they were French and you never know for sure. <laughs> but I, I, no, they were nice people. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, you could, that sort of stuff is out there. Um, and the... Um, the authorities, oh no, let me get this right, the, the, the kind of people who do have the, the word on Giacometti or yes. I've been thinking of Andy Warhol, they've gone all together. There isn't anybody now. Right. So if Sotheby's say this is good, Christie could say it's bad, Phillips could say it's brilliant, and Bonhams could say we're not going to sell it. We that. don't know. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. that's where we are now. Wow. Is it really, so it's that kind of sort of free-for-all Wild West kind of, kind of scenario? Well, well, certainly with some artists, particularly Warhol, yes. What's changed? The uh, Warhol Institute or Foundation or whatever it was um, got a little bit um, arrogant and started saying that prints produced without Andy's presence, I might well have got this wrong, but some, without Andy's physically being there were 
um, they wouldn't authenticate them. Now, how they knew whether he'd actually been there when they were rolling off the presses, I don't know. Yeah. So they started disauthenticating um, paintings that collectors had acquired. Wow. And this was possibly to show how powerful they were in the art world. What they hadn't counted on was a group of collectors getting together and starting a class action against them. <laughs> Almost like a union. Uh, almost like yeah, a union yeah, or yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. people had done with the Volkswagen uh, Mis-selling emissions. And, yeah, thing. yeah, wow. Um, okay. and, and they sued them. Um, and they just folded up shop. They, the wow. lawyer's fees and everything else, and the fact that they were going to lose, they were told, you're going to lose this. Um, so they just folded up. And they said, well, sorry, you know, that's it, we're done. Shut us down and yep. good night. Wow. And so presumably then that sort of rippled through the, through the ethers that if actually if you push too hard, we'll push back kind of thing as yes. the collectors. Yeah. yeah. And rightly so. so uh, you know, if you, if you know you own a general or you best of your ability, you, why shouldn't you be able to? It is the arrogance it? of academics, really, and particularly art historians that, um, again, be careful, you know, John, but I mean, you're only talking about 10 or 20% of them. 80% of them are really fascinating people to talk to because they know so much yeah. about Cezanne and Picasso. And whatever. But 20% of these people are on the maker to, to create a reputation. Right. And those are the dangerous ones. And yeah. I think those are the ones that, that I think Fiona Bruce and um, that man she works with uncovered one where, where the work was obviously authentic. I think it was a William Nicholson. And yet... Um, it, had, it was disauthenticated by the lady who'd taken over the foundation just right. to show yeah. that she could, Here I am. if she yeah. wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I am, look how much power I've got. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and so, moving forward, is there anything, what, 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 what do you see? Are, are you going to start painting John Myatt's? I know these are. Well, there's 30 of them next door. I've never, I mean, I've, I've never stopped doing it. No. It's just that, um, well, what is it just? It's just that... Um, for one thing, I really don't want to part with them. I, yeah. I, I like them. Like so if much. someone actually says, oh, I want to buy that, I go, oh, no, you know, yeah. not really. Let me show you this instead. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Second of all, I don't know how much they're worth. Right. Um, we won't and third of all, they them. will be on the back of the film. Glenn was already mentioned this, that there will, there will be a show of them. And, you know, at some point I'll just have to say, yes, of course, I need to make a living. Mm. Please... You know, if they go to yeah. good homes and people who like them, yes, uh, let's do it. Yeah, well, that's good. It's good that I, th I believe that they should be out in the world for people. Precisely. To enjoy. I mean, they're they're hiding away in a storeroom now. No one's looking at them apart from me mm. and my kids occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Which is a shame. They should be out in the world. Yeah, they should enjoyed. be really. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I think we've kind of discussed everything that I, I really wanted to discuss. Good. Um, and it's just so interesting. I could actually just sit here for day, you know, all day, just just chatting to you and asking questions. Is there anything you want to ask me, or anything you want to, you want to say before we wrap up? No, I think you know your your. I re the talk I do to Sotheby's really is always based around authenticity. You know, um, do you who do you think you are? Who do other people think you are? Mm. What are the are you? Did you fragrance yourself this morning? Did you put on a branded shirt or trousers or vest or dress and all yes. this kind of thing? So, in a way, you know, you, you have invented yourself. Yes. Social every signaling day. And, and all yes. of that stuff. All of that. Yes. And, <clears throat> and, and this kind of transaction is the one that you bring to a painting, mm. even if you don't like it, yeah. even if it doesn't go with the curtains. Yeah. You know? Um, it's, it, it's a Cezanne, it's a Van Gogh, it's an Andy Warhol, yes. it's a brand. Yes, and, and, and what that says about me and my yeah. taste and my style and how much money I've got, look at yes. me, yes, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Except sometimes it's not. It's Except sometimes, well, even Because some then, of your pieces are well, still out there, we bought the they? original, but, 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 but that's in the bank and we asked that guy yes. to copy it for us. Which is funny because then, well, do you still enjoy it? Yeah, just as much. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. So, well, why own the, why own the original? Land? I get quite a bit of that as well. People are moving house or whose paintings. There was one guy who tank burst in his house and uh, flooded all the way down and destroyed, basically, a couple of the paintings I'd done for him. Wow. And um, he'd paid X for it. Yeah. And, you know, 
today I would charge X plus Y. So he wanted a valuation from the insurance company. So I said, well, look, you know, I reckon it'll be between 15 and 30,000 pounds. Yeah, substantial, uh, yeah. You know, it's a lot of work. And, yeah, uh, yes. He went, okay. He was happy. I mean, and that, yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying to fleece anybody. That was no, actually... No. But that's the value to, yes. to, of the time. Yes. And that changes, and that's perfectly and acceptable. Indeed. Of I course mean, it is. Normally, after I'm dead, there will be a spike yes. in prices, and then depending on other intangibles, um, it'll slowly go down, and people there will be a, a group of people who will collect what I've done, particularly yes. the originals, actually. Yes. They will collect what I've done. I'm one of them. And, <laughs> and, and that will kind of go down a bit and then plateau. So, right. so people... And when does that go to the when does that go to the moon? When does that what's the difference between so you were saying that, you know, there are artists who you know, it's almost a cliche, when they're alive they can't give them away. Mm. At what point does somebody say that's worth a lot of money? D does something happen? What ha what do I have to do when you're God forbid if I die if I this is assuming that you died before me, uh, um what 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 must, what where do I press what button do I press to make them Gosh, that's a very interesting question, isn't it? Um, who decides? Well, it's it's the market, I suppose, isn't it? I mean, th thing your wristwatch is worth what someone will pay for it. I yes. mine was fourteen ninety nine. Right. Yours is probably a bit more than that. Fourteen thousand yeah. and ninety nine. Or yes. Something, you yeah, know? yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, so, but I wouldn't give you. 14,000, but I, I, I'd probably give you somewhere around about 20 quid for that. The, right, you know, okay. Okay, so it, I wouldn't sell it's it worth that, to me. Yes, now, of course. This is not, this you would say is worth 20p to you. That probably does more than mine as well. It probably tells yes, it, you more than mine, just tells me the time and the date. <laughs> but you see what I mean? It's yes, hard to I say. Uh, yes. What people tend to do is try and corner the market. Right. So in Tom Keating's case, for yes. instance, that old guy who did those um, Samuel Palmers, the, there are a couple of people who went Keating. Yeah. And they just went for it. Right. And Eric, is Eric it who Kimball. does that is important too, presumably. So if, for example, I don't know, Brad Pitt says, oh, I sees one of your pieces and says, after you've gone and says, wow, I've got to have as many of these as I possibly yeah. can, that would obviously help the Because price. he's Brad Pitt. Yes. Um, the, uh, possibly, um, since we're using so many of my originals in the movie. Yes. In fact, every single visual image you see in the movie is one of my paintings that will add value to the paintings because people will be able to watch a film and go, oh, no, there it is. That, yes. that, that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm one of them. They asked You're for one my, of them. Yeah, yeah, they asked for one of my... So one said, of yours is going to go When I in. bought one of your originals, oh, they said... I love it. Yes. They Wonderful. said it's got to go, as long as you, you can buy it, but you've got to be willing to give it back for the film. Yeah. I said, well, of course I will. We did that three yeah. years ago, and you know, you just the before album cover. COVID. <laughs> bloody COVID came. Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. And, you know, it was just... Ooh. Yeah, everything stopped. Quite interesting. And yeah. nothing happened, and some poor guy in Spain or something had bought a Matisse painting in the style of Matisse and um, he said can I have my painting now please you know yeah. it'd be three years oh, yeah. well, when the paintings when the movie's done yeah of course and he said no I want it now N never mind the movie yeah, yeah just you know yeah let me have my painting but, well that's good that he, he missed it and he loves it and I get it because I've, I've anyway that's the end of it. that folks so yeah. um Take care and all the rest of it. I've got Thanks one more question. Actually, do you know what? I want? It's not a question. I want to tell you something. That when when people are in my uh, when people are with me and they see your pieces, I've got to tell you this. They um they say to me, oh wow, it's amazing. And I say, oh yeah, this is a guy called John Mayer. And blah 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 blah. And I say, and this is something that I say in my patter that I haven't said to you. And I just want to see what your reaction to it is. I say, in my mind, he's far more talented than the people he copies. Oh no. no. And I'll tell you for what. No, no. I'll tell you why. Because you can do a John Meyer that a lot of people who seem to know a lot more about art than I do believe it's an original, but you can also do a Chagall and all the other people, but they couldn't presumably do each other. So if, you, if we got them in the room and said, Chagall, do a Monet, yeah, okay. he couldn't have done it. Yeah, well, that is like saying, what's his name? Or does those wonderful impersonation? Cultural. Somebody cultural. Mm. He, he can do John Major and he can do, you know, Muhammad Ali. He can do everybody. Mm. Um, and slightly different, and I'll tell you why. Because copying John um, uh, Major's voice doesn't mean you can run the country like he can. Whereas you can actually yes. produce okay. the talent that these men have. Or, uh, and, and I'm standing on their backs. Don't forget that. Mm. Someone had to go through that gate before me. And um, 
Well, they had to live the experience and the pain that and, and joy and everything else that went exactly. into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's Before fair. you actually, well, yeah. you can cut that, but I'll show you this painting because it just, right. I love it so much. So, so am I wrong then, John? Um, are you, uh, cause I, I, I yes. don't know how you argue that. No, you are wrong. You, we were talking about curator. I just wanted to show this to the camera. I mean, this is a painting within a painting. This real frame, Claude Monet. Um, and this is what we were talking about, the the academic um, careerists, if you like, yes. who, whose reputation depends vitally on the authenticity of what they're selling. Quite rightly so too. Of course, yeah. Of course. Their reputation but here he's saying, unfortunately, I am, now re I am now reliably informed that our painting cannot be genuine. It is a fake. So perhaps your best move would be to f*** off and go and look at something else. Now, why would he say that? Yeah. Why would he say f*** off and go and look at something else? Yeah. Because what's wrong with looking at that? In fact, people would be more interested Absolutely. in looking at it because it's a fake. Particularly because if it's sold for a lot of money and it's somebody's been you know, conned or whatever. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But, but the reason he would say it is because he's embarrassed. It's nothing oh God, to do yeah. with the it's nothing to do with the quality of the art or the value of the art even. No. It's actually more about his his reputation. He's his the head curator, his, so he wears a bow tie and a dicky bow and he's a posh geezer. Yeah. You know, so he's, he's kind of got mud on his face. Yes. Um but from my point of view, I I remember talking to a chap who'd who was who was a, a curator in Oslo and he said if I had an exhibition of Van Gogh they'd be queuing round the block mm. I wish I could get an exhibition of Van Gogh but you know what John he said if I had an exhibition of fake Van Goghs mm. they'd be queuing all the way round the block and down to the railway station and that one yeah. stayed with me yes. I thought well that was someone who was at the in, in his country at the top of the tree and that's yeah. what he said and it's that, that, I think that's the curiosity that going back to Banksy, that's what he's tapped into, yes. isn't it? With his Mona Lisa's and things, and, and the shredding yes. after the... Oh, I, I mean, love it. just so fantastic, brilliant. wasn't it? And then oh, they're brilliant. selling the shreds. And they're selling the shreds. Anyway, please yeah. don't yeah. be offended by thinking... Of, mm, yeah, yeah, no, We hope fine. you're over 18 and all the rest of it. Yeah, no, fine. Brilliant. And you say there's 30 of those? Uh, yeah, John. 30. Come and have a look. I'd love to. Right. What's that going to call? Um, and that actually is exactly the painting. Quite an interesting bloke who sold um, all those fake Vermeers. One I did an awful lot of forgeries of Ben Nicholson. You're naughty. Yeah.